Welcome to this series of classes by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He is a foremost Christian apologist and Bible expositor with a worldwide demand. Please press the subscribe button below this video and then please click the bell icon near it. This will ensure that you never miss any valuable video of Dr. Philip. God bless you. We have been studying Bibliology. And uh, as I reminded you, it's the first doctrine that actually we should study. Because unless we know what the Bible says about itself, and uh, unless we make it very clear to ourselves as to what we ought to believe about the Bible, we will, in all probability, we will go wrong about the Bible, particularly in our generation. Before I go further, I request uh, prayers for me and uh, my wife. My wife has been uh, suffering from high fever and uh, throat problem for three days and I have been suffering it from this morning. Please pray that we might be healed fast because my dad is with us. And Lord willing, he will be completing 91 this week. Obviously, he is in a very susceptible condition. Coming back to the Bible, the last topic we studied was illumination. And I made the difference between inspiration and illumination clear. 66 books, 40 writers. The 40 or so many writers of the 66 books of the Bible, they were guided by the Holy Spirit to select even the very words which they were to put down into these 66 books. And Lord Jesus said, the earth and the sky shall pass away but not even a jot or tittle. In our language, that would be not even a comma or an apostrophe will go away without being fulfilled. So since the scriptures, scripture was written with such an accuracy, the word we use for that is inspiration or inspired by the Holy Spirit. It is different from the way we use inspiration in our day-to-day -day life. The question, the last question we considered in our last class was, okay, I read the Bible. I get a lot of inspiration. And based upon my inspiration, I speak. Am I inspired by the Holy Spirit? Technically, not. When speaking about the Bible, we use the word inspiration strictly for those 40 people who wrote the 66 books of the canon. You may say canon, what do you mean? That we will pick up later. So a question may come to your mind. Okay, fine. When I read the Bible and when I understand the scripture, what exactly is happening to me? That is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, 7. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says that each person is given the illumination. The King James Version uses the word manifestation. It's a good word uh, in Old English, but in today's uh, English, the correct would be, but the light or illumination of the Spirit is given to every man to profit from inside. Well, you may say, Brother Johnson, I read the Bible, but I don't get any illumination. It's all sort of a dry book to me. 
<clears throat> that's because one has to be tuned to the Holy Spirit to be illuminated. You can't just go and sit there and say, well, um, I want an illumination from the Holy Spirit. No. There is a protocol. Just because uh, you have been sitting in a medical doctor's office and typing all his documents doesn't mean that tomorrow you will be able to behave or practice as a medical doctor. For that, you have to go through the medical college. In the same way, anyone here who wants to receive the illumination of the Holy Spirit should make it a habit to read and study the scripture regularly. Initially, you may not understand much, but whether you understand or not, keep reading, keep reading, keep studying, keep studying, and finally, one fine day, you will say, hey, the moment I open the scripture, I am able to understand it. This happened to me a long time ago. I was in BSc first year. And uh, I kept on praying, Lord, help me to understand the scripture as it is. That was the time when one of my friends who was studying in the Bible, he said, Johnson, you need to be more disciplined. Number one, read the Bible every day. Number two, keep a diary with you. Number three, keep a pen with you. And every, everything that strikes you, you start noting it down. Initially, I started noting down a lot of random, unconnected thoughts. He said, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Don't stop. Don't hesitate. I kept doing it. And eventually, I came to a situation where I could really say, when I opened the scripture, God, the Holy Spirit, really speaks to me. It took a little bit of time, two to three years. It took me two to three years of time. For some of you, it may take less than that. For some of you, it may take more than that. But without discipline, you cannot get the illumination of the Holy Spirit, though it is available to everyone. Some months ago, I gave you the example of typewriting. Today, typewriting no longer exists. But in my childhood, a lot of people went to type institutes. And I was so stunned to see the senior ones typing with lightning speed. I wanted to repeat the same thing. So from the first day itself, I started doing that. My teacher came and said, no, Johnson. You have to start from the start. You keep typing A S D F G semicolon L K J H and keep typing that row. It is known as home row. Keep typing till I ask you to go to the next row. And the moment my teacher would go here and there, I would start typing full text and I would not be able to do that. And finally, he was fed up. He called my dad and he said, whatever fees you gave, I returned it. Take your boy away from me. After a few years, I understood my lack of discipline. I started going to Type Institute once again and I started typing properly. First of all, I practiced a ASDFG semicolon LKJH. And once my teacher said, man, you are now perfect, you go to the second row. Once that was done, he said, you go to the third row and so on. As a result, when I type lengthy articles these days, I never look at the keyboard. No, I never look at the keyboard. 
I use all the 10 fingers that is known as the touch typing. And touch typing comes so naturally to me, so naturally. Just sit and start typing. What's the secret? Practice. In the same way, though illumination of the Holy Spirit is available to everyone, the secret of illumination is discipline. So those of you who are struggling with the scripture, those of you who feel that, no, I'm not able to make the sense of the scripture, please remember, you need to discipline yourself anywhere from one to three years. And then all your life, you will reap the results. With that, we go to the next point. <clears throat> the scripture, excuse me, the scripture says, it is inspired by the Holy Spirit and not even a comma or apostrophe would be removed from it. Then the question is, okay, uh, are the religious books of other religions also on the same level? The answer is, According to Hinduism, their books are the product of best in human logic. They call it Shruti, what was heard, and Yukti, what is logical. Most of the other world religions say that their religious books are produced by their human founders. Islam says that their holy book, Quran, was dictated dictated verbatim by the archangel. In Malayalam, they call, use the word avadirnam. Hindi, they say, asman se utri hai. Archangel dictated it. Bible makes a totally different claim. Bible makes it very clear that Bible has come here by the verbal inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, there is no similarity between the Bible and books of other religions. We don't disrespect any, any religious book. I, I want to make it very clear. A true Christian will not disrespect other religions, leaders of other religions, or their religious books. These days, there is a tendency among a microscopic minority of Christians to speak ill about other religions, books of other religions, and founders of other religion. No, that is not a Christian activity. Please remember, it is not even a socially accepted acceptable activity, let alone a Christian activity. Then we come to the canon. What exactly is the meaning of the word canon? And why do we use the word canon for the Bible? Actually, originally the word canon was used for a measuring rod. Since Bible is a Christian's ultimate measuring rod <coughs> or measuring, so <coughs> apologies for all cough and everything. Fortunately, uh, I am over the internet, so I cannot give it to you. I cannot spread it to you. So you are safe. Ultimately, canon means measuring rod, and since a Christian measures everything in the light of the Bible, Christians started calling the Bible as their canon. The canon came in many ways, and that is mentioned clearly 
in Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 say, God who at different times and in different manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken unto us through his son. So the scripture itself makes clear that God spoke to fathers. Who are the fathers? Jews. Thank you, Brother Johnson John, for posting the references. If anyone misses the references, you need to look into the comment box. And Brother Johnson John has always been very courteous in posting those references whenever he is online. So, the scripture makes it very clear that God's word came through prophets. And it was given to fathers. Who are the fathers? A Jew uses the word father to refer to people in the Old Testament, the great leaders of the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, all scripture came through prophets and God spoke to the fathers of the Jewish nation. In the last days, he has spoken unto us by his son. The entire New Testament is details about Lord Jesus, the things for which he, which he came. That is why it is said in the last days, he has spoken unto us by his son. The Old Testament has 39 books, which is known to everybody. But uh, if you have a diary, please note quickly that the Old Testament books were written between BC 1450 to BC 400. BC 1450 to BC 400. 1450 is the approximate time when Jews left Egypt. And Moses had plenty of time in the wilderness to write down Genesis, Exodus, and all those five books, and also the book of Job. He also had plenty of leather. Please remember, they had plenty of animals, and therefore they had Moses had access to plenty of high-quality leather. Also, please remember that. Jews were, were meticulous in keeping their family history. Today, we don't keep our family history. I know about my great-grandfather, but who was my great-grandfather's father? I don't know. I know about my great-grandfather because I've seen him. I was 10 when he passed away at the age of 103. That's why I know. But who was his father? I don't know. Does my father know? No, he doesn't know. We, we who live in the 21st century, we don't keep family history and family records. But Indians did have a habit. It is uh, almost a vanishing habit. But the Jews were very, very, very meticulous. They kept their family history and genealogy very, very carefully. And when they left Egypt, they took their family histories and genealogy and everything with them. And Moses had 40 years in the wilderness to write the five books, the first five books of the Bible, and also the book of Job. And during this time, he could easily check and verify family histories by calling people from various families to produce their written records. Oh, you may say, brother, 1450, that is 1,500 years before Christ. 3,500 years 
before present and you may say brother johnson even in the 21st century there are many cultures where people are not literate and you are talking about literacy and books 3500 years from today is it reasonable is it practical fair enough and we will look at it later but i would say that is fair enough why would i say it is fair enough because when we study bibliology any reasonable and fair question that comes to our mind must be answered so was writing known i will come to that why the old testament books stopped in bc 400 please remember in the book of daniel we read that nebuchadnezzar took them as slaves there was a return but in bc 400 there was absolute and total slavery jews never went back to their motherland after bc 400 so much so that by bc 350 most jews even forgot their language most jews forgot their language you may ask uh, how do you know that most jews forgot their language because in bc 350 a lot of jews who wanted to read the old testament did not know hebrew language and since they did not know hebrew language they gathered scholars to translate the old testament into greek language 71 scholars did that translation one of them passed away so finally 70 people were able to do that translation and that translation is known as da 70 you may not have heard the 70 but i am sure many of you have heard the septuagint septuagint means the translation done by the 70 so by 400 they went into slavery there was nobody in the mainland there were no people practically no people no and uh, no prophets <coughs> and god's revelation in the old testament through prophets came to an end after a 400 year gap lord jesus came to the world septuagint kept the old testament alive in the memory of the jews who had adopted greek as their mother tongue or aramaic as their mother tongue aramaic is uh, almost similar to what we call as suriani which is uh, used in many churches in kerala or syriac so please remember 400 years there was no prophet no revelation and then one day suddenly a prophet came around ad 30 and he said repent that was john the baptist after 430 years god raised a prophet among them he started prophesying and then lord jesus came on the scene and lord jesus lived in this world from a, from approximately bc 4 up to ad 30 hey you may say bc means before christ how could christ live before christ well actually the calendar that we use 
it was made hundreds of years after the time of christ it was made by a roman catholic monk based upon the available documents he calculated the birth year of christ and produced the calendar but later archaeological documents made it very clear that he had made an error of three and a half to four years once we correct for that error it becomes clear that lord jesus was born in bc 4 his resurrection was in bc 30 and the church came into existence in bc in uh, his resurrection was in ad 30 the church came into existence 10, year, 10 days after the resurrection of Lord Jesus. And soon the church started spreading everywhere. The first gospel, the gospel of Matthew was written in AD 35. You may again say, hey brother, uh, I heard the Sunday school textbook saying that Mark was the first gospel. Do you remember in 1700s and 1800s, a lot of German radicals, they had told that what we claim today is false, but we will brainwash your children and grandchildren to such an extent that what you claim as false, your children and grandchildren will claim as biblical truth excuse me so this whole idea that mark's gospel was the first it came from german radicals who is a radical a radical is a person who rejects everything they don't like the title but the correct title for these germans is radicals radicals taught for the first time please remember for 1800 years the church had taught that matthew was the first gospel oral history made it very clear that matthews was the first gospel but in 1800s the radicals rejected it they substituted another theory that mark was the first they had a very, very decept deceptive plan behind it that I will share very soon. So it is according to that deceptive plan that the whole idea that Mark was the first gospel spread among us. Please remember Matthew was the first gospel it was written around 35 AD and between 40 to 50 AD when St. Thomas came to India to a spot which is 50 kilometers away from the spot where I am sitting today. He came with a copy of the Gospel of Matthew, probably in the Aramaic language. So, the first book of the New Testament was written in AD 35 and the last book of the New Testament was written in AD 70. Then you may say, brother, we heard that uh, Revelation was written in AD 100. Please remember, this is again a lie which was fed to the church by theological radicals. All books of the New Testament were written between AD 35 to AD 70. Only a gap of 35 years between the first book and the last book. So, the approximate gap between Genesis and Revelation, approximate, is 1000 
500 years. I am saying approximate because we are not dealing with arithmetical accuracy, but numbers which are easy to remember. So the Old Testament was uh, written between 1450 to 400 BC. The New Testament was written between AD 35 to AD 70. And the approximate gap between the first, the first book of the Bible and the last books of the Bible is 1,500 years. Now, few minutes ago, I had asked a question. You may ask uh, Brother Johnson, Where books known 1,500 years before Christ or 3,500 years before present? It's a wonderful question. Let me present something to you. You might be surprised to see this exactly what could this be these are mud tablets and these mud tablets were produced approximately thousand years before the time of christ uh, i'm sorry uh, approximately three thousand five hundred years before the time of Christ. Moses wrote Genesis thousand, approximately 1500 years. These mud tablets on which you can see handwritten material was produced 2000 years before the book of Genesis was written. So, if anyone here has any doubt about what books of, uh, about whether Genesis could have come so early, let me remind you that books were written not on paper. Paper is a recent arrival, you need to understand. Paper is a very recent arrival and we will come to paper very soon. Writing material, the correct word is writing material. Writing material came at least 2000 years before Genesis. And if writing material came 2000 years before Genesis, then naturally Moses could easily have written. You may ask, what's the name of these tablets? These tablets are known as Kish, K I S H, Kish tablets from Sumer. I'm sure many of you have heard about Sumerian civilization. Sumerian civilization is one of the oldest civilizations. And the, this tablet, this is two sides of the same tablet. The Kish tablet is preserved in Ashmolean Museum in England. It is there. If you have any friend, you can ask them to confirm and they will send you. They will be able to send you a picture. So the oldest writing discovered so far. Why do I say so far? We can never be sure that tomorrow something older would not come up. The oldest writing, written material discovered so far are the Kish tablets from Sumer, which were produced in 3500 BC, 2000 years before the time of Moses. 
since we are on the subject of books one more question will be relevant you may say brother johnson you said that each jewish family had collection of books where collection of books known during old testament times it's a very good question and actually all of us should know because when we talk with unbelievers theological radicals most of them think that we are ignorant and they may drop this idea hey 1500 years no 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 the no. handwriting was not known handwriting was known 2000 years before the time of moses second question where collection of books known before the time of moses let me use a word what do we call as a collection of books we call it a library you can see a library behind me i always refer it to my private library where will you be i will be in the library that is the word i use so collection of books is known as library so if books were known where libraries known did they know did they have libraries before the time of moses and the answer is yes moses was an egyptian he was a jew by birth but he was an egyptian prince by adoption egypt had vast libraries and so many books have been discovered in egypt that even in the 21st century they have all not been translated so much material has come from egypt but egyptian library at the time of moses is not the oldest library known to mankind the oldest library known to mankind is ebla library you may ask what is this ebla thing ebla was a kingdom a very vast kingdom and they have discovered a vast library in ebla <coughs> you will be surprised the ebla library is 1000 years older than the time of moses which means that libraries were known at the time of moses but libraries were known in middle east a thousand years before the time of moses and once they started reading ebla tablets there are about 20000 tablets i showed you the kish tablets uh, we will also look at ebla tablets very soon the 20000 tablets or fragments were discovered and once they started reading the 20000 or so many tablets and fragments many of them made it clear that they are copies of books from a certain library the name is mentioned these are from the libraries of ashur bani pal and ashur narsi pal who are ashur bani pal and ashur narsi pal they were kings who ruled a thousand years before the time of ebla so if ashur bani pal they are well known emperors if ashur bani pal and ashur narsi pal had libraries please remember that there were libraries 2000 years before the time of moses i gave you i felt i should give all this background because these days bibliology is a hot subject of debate the moment you declare that you are a christian 
somebody or other is bound to say oh a christian do you understand that the books which you use the 66 books of the bible they are not genuine and if you ask why why are they not genuine well the art of writing was not known at the time of moses so moses could not have written those books the first five books of the bible and also the book of job <clears throat> you may say does anybody ask such question oh yes they do ask 20 years ago yeah approximately 20 years ago or 18 years ago in mulandurthi area where dr saneshwari and settled for at that time he settled for preaching the gospel there was a jacobite priest who was going and questioning everybody who spoke about the canon of the bible and he challenged every christian no these books could not have been written the first five books could not have been written by moses and uh, even during new testament period script was not known it became a big new essence because he was targeting brethren people for his attack and then finally dr sanish and many other brothers there had to organize a debate where i would debate that priest about canon so when it was organized a few other subjects also came up so at my suggestion the late mm skaria was also invited and me and late brother mm skaria were the speakers in that debate but the question is why did that debate take place because even in this 21st century many many christians let alone non christians they challenge the truthfulness of the bible and therefore we all should have some of this basic information about the canon of the bible i thank god for the opportunity that he gave in this manner for us to discuss this subject my apologies for being sick and not being able to speak continually without coughing i'm going to stop it here dear friends i am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by dr johnson c philip he would love to get your questions please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you Please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that Dr. Philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean. Also, please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel. Below this video, there is a subscribe button. Please click it. Also, please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing. Thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel.